Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Derek Elliott from Derek.com and in today's video, which is sponsored by my good friends at Squarespace, we're going to start with a basic principle shader and slowly work our way towards a more complex procedural fabric shader. We'll also learn a little bit about adding fuzz to the fabric with a particle system and if you stick around until the end, we'll cover some basic cloth simulation so that you can set up your own cloth object to use as a backdrop or just to practice your shaders on. Thanks for being here and let's get started. All right, so I am in a scene with a simple cloth backdrop type object. Uh, if you wanna know how to create that, we will cover that at the end of the tutorial. And there's a little bit of lighting in the scene, of course, so that we can see our cloth. So just take a peek at the settings there if you are interested. And then we have our camera that I just have set at a nice composition here. Now the material that's on this object obviously has a Dirk logo attached to it. That's just created with this group here. That's just on top of a default principle shader. So don't worry about the Dirk logo. Just wanted to have it in there. Thought it looked a little bit cooler. So I am going to start off with this principled BSDF shader, all default settings on here. And we are going to yeah start making this material. So first thing I'll do is set a color for it. Pick whatever color you like, but I'm going to use something like a orangish yellow there i thought it looked pretty good and yeah we're going to start changing some settings adding some things now the first thing we will change is the roughness so again and this goes for everything we do from this point forward it's going to depend on the look you're going for what you're trying to create with this fabric but for the most part i like to have this roughness be a much higher value that's going to look a little bit more fabric so more fabricy. so if you're not familiar with roughness down at zero it's going to be pretty shiny up at one, it's not gonna be shiny. So leave it at a pretty high value. You can pull that back just a little bit if you want. 0.991 looks pretty good. And yeah, that is your most basic fab fabric material. If you're if that's all you need to know, feel free to drop off a tutorial at any point. Hopefully you stick around for a little bit longer than that. But step one, pull the roughness up. That's gonna give you a little bit closer to fabric. Now, the next easy thing we'll do is add in our first texture. I'm gonna press Shift A texture and that'll be a magic texture which a magic texture if we plug this into the normal is not going to be doing quite what we want but that's because we need to change this um, color going to a normal and we want to add in a vector bump and then have this go from the color to the height so the color input on that magic texture is influencing the height which is then getting converted to a normal output which is plugged into our shader there and we have um, something happening. It's obviously not looking quite right, but uh, it is kind of working a little bit better now. So the main thing that's not looking right is that this is not really mapped properly. So a lot of times with procedural textures, we will use the object input, uh, but in this case, it's using the default generated input for this texture, which is also not working. You can see this is what the object looks like. Um, and before I go much further, what I just did there to add those two nodes was select this magic texture and press control T and then I'll add in a texture coordinate and mapping node. And if you can't do that, then you probably don't have the node wrangler add on enabled, which I would highly recommend. It comes for free with blender. It's already installed. You just have to enable it. So node wrangler, make sure that's on. We'll use a couple node wrangler hotkeys. So yeah, one more time, control T is going to bring those up. And I want to use the UV input. Now you will obviously have to have a UV for your object. You need to have it UV unwrapped to make it working properly. So if you're working with your own object, make sure that it has UVs. If you follow the steps at the end of this video to drop the cloth onto a plane and kind of create a setup like this, then the plane would have already had proper UVs. But if I go into a UV editor here, you can see that my UVs are nice and square. If you try to unwrap this already the way it is now, it might not look right. But yeah, if you drop the cloth and start it as a plane, you should already have UVs on there. But I just wanted to make a little note about that. But we can see now that this is mapping a lot more regularly. And this is kind of creating a nice cross hatch pattern, which I think is the first step to kind of creating a nice texture for fabric. So again, feel free to drop off at any point, but we can play with the distance values here. Usually on procedural textures, you want the distance to be pretty low, and then you can kind of control the strength to determine how chunky or non-chunky that texture looks. So I'm going to leave it maybe something like that, and maybe we'll bring the scale up a little bit. 
just so we kind of have the look we're going for. You're going to want to think all throughout this process about what scale you're going to be viewing your fabric from. You might want to go a little more extreme with the numbers if you're going to be um, further away just so that it stands out more. And if you're going to be zooming in close, you might want to be a little bit more subtle with them. So that looks pretty good. Let's add in a couple more textures. The first I'm going to add in is a wave texture. So I'm going to go texture, wave texture. And then I will have this also going through the UV. Plug that in right there. And then in this color field, I want to plug that into another bump node. So let's shift D to duplicate this bump. Plug that in right there. And then have this one go into the new field for the height on that. All right, so let's imagine you are now the go-to person for fabric rendering in Blender, or maybe you're an actual textiles professional in the real world, and you want to get a website. You need to get a website. There's no better way to set one up than with Squarespace. Whether you're showcasing your portfolio of work and looking for clients, giving them a way to contact you, or you're ready to start selling shirts, bags, blankets, and more with an online shop, Squarespace has you covered. Start out by picking one of their many beautifully designed templates and drag and drop your way to the moon. When you're ready to get started, head on over to squarespace.com slash Dirk for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Don't wait another day and get started today with Squarespace. Now, if we pull this scale up, you can start to see those waves. Now, a lot of procedural fabrics will use two wave textures to kind of create that cross hatched pattern, but I think the magic texture does a pretty good job, but I do want a little bit more directionality to my fabric. So the wave texture in addition to that magic texture gives me a nice look. Now something like that looks pretty good. The wave texture in particular, you want this distance to be pretty low. Um, you can see that this is set to sign, but even if it's set to um, not, you know, if you set it to, or yeah, there's options for sign saw and triangle, which I'm not gonna go into explaining what those are, but sign should appear um, pretty smooth. You can see that this is what like a saw would look like or triangle. But the, yeah, the sign should be smooth, but it's not always particularly smooth. You can see, oops, if we take a look at this and unplug that one, that it's not, it's still not like super smooth, especially if this is up at, you know, a value of one. So the more you pull that down, the more it'll soften. And then you can also bring the strength down a little bit. And that's going to start to feel a little bit more rounded over. But just a note on that. Um, I'm going to plug this all back in together. So that's what it looks like the wave with the wave. We just got a little directionality. You could change this here to, um, you know, go the other direction or maybe even try having it go a diagonal direction. Looks a little bit interesting. All up to your preference. I might leave that at the Y direction, I think is kind of cool. And yeah, with all these textures, obviously play with the values as much as you want, but I think that that's looking pretty good. So just another little layer of detail. Now the last layer of detail in terms of texture that we'll add is going to be trying to add sort of some fake fuzz, a little bit of irregularity to it. And I'm going to do that with a noise texture. So shift A, add in a noise texture. We can have this also go into that same input. And then the noise texture I'll have go into another bump. I'm just gonna kind of move these over here. So I'll do one more bump, shift D to duplicate that, and then have this factor go into the height so that now we also have a noise texture. If we take a look at that, um, I'm going to disconnect this so we can see just the noise. Um, we'll see kind of what that is doing, which it's not doing anything right now. Oh, there it is. So there's a the noise texture. It's adding a little bumpiness to it. It's kind of like a chalky, rough bumpiness though, and I don't want it everywhere like that, where it's just kind of yeah going up and down like crazy. So I'm gonna add in a color ramp, drop that right there, and then I can use this color ramp to basically make it so that noise texture isn't everywhere, but that we just have it kind of happening in some places. You know, For the most part, it's flat, but we have a little bit of something happening in some areas and now it doesn't look very fuzzy now but the way i'll sort of add that fuzz is just to turn up this distortion value and we get a little bit of a a fuzz thing happening there so just using the color ramp to kind of control how much of that we're seeing something like that i think looks pretty good you can turn this distortion value up as high or low as you want again just think about the scale at which you're going to be viewing your object you might not want that to be too high 
So if we connect that back up and then plug this all back together, we can see that we just have this little bit of detail just in case you do get kind of close, that's something that you would see. And you can control the strength and distance of these values all independently to make one texture stand out more or less than the other. Now the noise does a good job of adding a little bit of irregularity, but I want to also add actually a little bit of regularity to that wave texture we added. And the way I'll do that, let's just take a look at that wave texture. Um, Shift Control, left click by the way, Node Wrangler hotkey to preview a texture. Hopefully I already said that earlier. I'll try to throw it up on the screen if I didn't. But uh, Shift Control, left click with the Node Wrangler enabled will allow you to preview um, just you know whatever node you click on. Um, so that's the wave texture. I want to add in a little bit of distortion to that so that those waves aren't perfectly even. Now I'll drop this detail down to zero and then the detail scale will allow me to control kind of how much that waviness is happening. So that is a little bit extreme. So um, for one, you could turn down to the, the distortion, but the detail scale, pulling that lower is gonna make those waves a little bit more subtle. So pulling that to a pretty low value and then, you know, changing the distortion is going to give you a more or less kind of waviness happening there. So I want that to be pretty subtle, but something like that I think is going to be fine. Let's plug this all back together, take a look at it, make sure everything is connected. It looks like it is. And yeah, with that, we have sort of our basic fabric material. So let's go ahead and save. I'm going to press F12 and take a look at what this looks like rendered just so that we can kind of compare where we started, where we're at now. And this is going to be a really good material for most use cases, just for a sort of generalized fabric. But of course, with procedural textures, we've got tons of options to play with different things. But yeah, this is this is looking pretty good. So the next step I want to do is to add in some actual fuzz to our fabric. And that's going to be what I would say is kind of the final, most realistic step to um, yeah, just making this look more realistic. This is going to be a lot more intense on your computer. If you're having uh, struggling with your computer already, you might want to skip this step, but I'm going to add in a particle system here. Now, if we press space bar, you can see our fabric will start snowing. I don't want that though. I want to use the hair system here, and that's going to be doing what I want. Obviously not doing what I want right now. It's looking a little bit like a crazy forest here. Um, first of all, I will actually disconnect the Durker Goodbye, Dirk. We all love you, but I don't want to see that right now. I want to focus on the hair. Now, there's a number of settings we want to change here. The first thing I will change is, um, I'll, for one, I'll push advanced here so that we bring up this physics tab. And then I'm going to add in a little bit of Brownian force, which will start to kind of twist these fibers so they look a little bit more irregular and they're not so straight. So pull that up to sort of whatever value. I'm going to use a pretty low value um, because the hair is still really long right now. But if we pull this hair length all the way down to zero, you'll see it's still poking out. And that's because the brownian is actually giving a little bit of velocity to these hairs. So they are actually poking out a tad. So we'll want to pull that down pretty low so the hairs aren't as long. And I'm not an expert here, but I've noticed that playing with a mix of brownian and then also the damping value. And then you can also even play with the mass will affect kind of the length of your hairs. You'd think it'd be as simple as just changing this hair length, but when you start adding in these forces, you kind of need to find the right balance there. So um, I'm gonna add in a lot more of these just so I can see more fuzz. And we can see that right now they look sort of tentacle-like where they're going to a point. I don't want that. I don't think that's very realistic for this particular case. So I'm going to, in the hair shape menu here, um, I'm going to uncheck close tip. And then I'm going to make this diameter root and, and tip diameter the same value. So a one. And then now we have, uh, it's looking a little bit more like macaroni, especially with my chosen color here, but um, I want to make these not so big. So you could turn down the diameter scale here or um, just change both these values. I'm going to change that to a 0.1. And now we have a much more fiber-like looking hair material. So that's looking better. Um, maybe we 10x this again. I'm going to add in another zero there. Now this is where your computer will really start to explode, but 
Got some good fuzz going there. You might wanna have a little bit more control over the material of the fuzz. By default, it's gonna be just using whatever material is on your object, but I want to have a separate material. So in the material settings, I'm gonna press plus right here, and I will add a new slot, and I'm gonna name that material fuzz, F-U-Z-Z, -Z. and then back in the particle settings, I'm going to have in the render tab, the material will be fuzz which we haven't set up that material, so it's just gonna appear like a, a basic white material now. Our, our fibers are white, which is kind of cool looking, of course. I always encourage playing around, doing something different than what I'm doing, but I do wanna make this into um, a more fuzz-like material. And the way I'm gonna do that is by deleting that principal shader and then adding in a shader and then principled hair BSDF, which when I plug that in there, will look like little hair strands. And the default is kind of this brunette color, but I wanna pick the color that I had in my fabric material. So if I switch back over to that, I can press Control C over that color field, now I'll copy it. And then down here in the fuzz, I can press Control V hovering over it, and that will paste that color. Now this gives you just sort of a more realistic hair strand material. It's kind of like a glassy type material, sort of clear, which I think looks pretty realistic. It can be maybe a little bit more intense on your computer. You might be able to hear mine whizzing in the background. Um, there's a lot of settings here I'm not particularly familiar with, but if you want your fuzz to appear a little bit less like transparent and clear, then you can turn this coat value up. That's gonna sort of match it to the color you have set here a little bit more closely. Uh, but the default values honestly look pretty good. So uh, we'll go ahead and save our file if you haven't already. And then I will, um, I'm gonna render this image and we'll just see what we got with all those particles there. So if we look at this all together, you can see we have sort of our nice underlying base fabric material and then bringing that extra level of realism. Hopefully your computer can handle it we have the actual particle system on top. Now, if you're familiar with geometry nodes, that's another way you can add fuzz, but I find that the default particle system works pretty good for most of my use cases, and it's just a little bit easier for me to understand because I've been working with it for longer. So don't feel like you need to use geometry nodes, but there are certain cases where geometry nodes is probably gonna be faster, maybe both for your computer and for your workflow, but hopefully you all enjoyed this little tutorial where we put together a basic cloth procedural material, change all the settings as much as you please. And you know, you're obviously will also use a image texture procedural textures aren't always the answer, but I like to use them because there's a lot of flexibility there and you can do all sorts of cool stuff with them. So anyways, stick around for the next part. If you want to see kind of what your, how you would do some physics to set up a a cloth object like this and you can of course apply what we learned there to all sorts of different cloth things so thanks for being here thanks for sticking around i'll see you in the next part uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already and uh yeah thanks for thanks for watching all right so let's set up a basic little scene with some cloth simulation so that we can have something to work on our fabric material with so i'm going to add in a plane to this blank scene here just scale it up a tad and I just wanna make a little bit of a ledge that my cloth can fall onto. So just doing a couple of simple commands here, Control R, adding edge loops, B to bevel, and just moving this up a little bit. And I wanna make this a little bit more rounded out, so I'm gonna add in a bevel modifier. Now again, this is just going to be a, a ground that our cloth can kind of fall onto. So something like that is gonna look good. And now I'm gonna add in another plane, bring that up a little bit, scale it in edit mode a tab, and this will be our actual cloth. Now, when you are doing cloth simulation, you can't just have a plane like this. You need to subdivide it. So I'll right click, subdivide, and then shift R to repeat that action a few times until you have kind of as dense of a mesh as you want. The more dense it is, the more fine your wrinkles and things will be, but it will also take longer to simulate and render. Um, but something like that I think is gonna work for me. So now we just need to add in the physics. So I'm going to add in a cloth for this one, and then this one needs to be a collision. Now if we press spacebar to player animation, you can see that it is working properly. We have our cloth there starting to slide off a little bit though. So there's going to be a few settings I changed, the first of which is going to be in the physics properties for this collision object, the floor. 
I'm gonna turn the friction up. If you turn it all the way up to 80, then it will be um, you know, really sticky, but you could turn it down a little bit just so that, you know, I'm okay with the cloth moving a little bit on the ground. I just don't want it to slide off like it did before. So something like a 69 is nice. So back at frame zero and anytime you are, you know, so what I want to do now is kind of move the cloth so it doesn't fall just flat down like that, because this is obviously not very interesting. Um, if you tried to move it or rotate it now, it's just going to be doing weird things. And that's because you need to be back at frame zero when you're doing those rotations. So back at frame zero, I'm just going to kind of move this cloth into a little bit of a different orientation so that when it falls, we get something happening that's a little bit more interesting. Now that is okay, but maybe we want it to do something a little bit different. Just kind of guess and check method here. Try it a few times until you get it looking sort of right. Uh, it obviously looks very janky, very polygonal now. Polygonal now. So step one is going to be right clicking to shade that smooth. And then the other thing we'd want to do is add in a subdivision service modifier to smooth this all out. And it's looking a lot better with those two steps. So the other problem though that we're now noticing is that the cloth is not colliding with itself. It's going through itself. So down here in the physics properties, or you could also just click this little button, which will jump you to the tab. Very convenient that they have that there. Uh, in the collision settings, you can change. Um, so right now object collisions is on, which we obviously want that, but self collisions was not on. So we'll enable that. And now the cloth should collide with itself. And it looks like it is. Um, so that's looking really nice. Uh, it's a little bit regular. I just kind of want to keep playing with this until I have sort of a, a nice orientation that's going to feel, you know, like it's got a variety of different folds and things like that. Something like that, I think, is looking pretty good. I think I might leave it at that. Um, there are a ton of settings you can change in the cloth simulation. There's even some presets here. Um, like if you change this to rubber, you could see what rubber looks like. And yes, it looks a little bit more rubbery. And you can use these presets as sort of examples. You can see the settings that are changed. Imagine how rubber would behave. Look at the settings here that are in the preset. And you can kind of apply those when you're creating your own cloth. Now, I think the default was cotton. So if I change that back to cotton, I should get back to where I was. I hope I didn't, uh, <laughs> hope I didn't lose it. Um, and yes, I think that that looks pretty good. I'll let that fall just a tad more. Stop it right there. And then I'm going to add in a camera and let's go into that camera view. And I just want to be sure that the kind of where I'm leaving this is going to leave me with a nice sort of a nice composition. And I think I think something like that looks good. We've got some kind of smoother folds in the foreground here, some tight folds in the middle and not so much folding happening on that ledge there. So I like this composition. Once you get it to a point you do like you can, um, so you don't have to simulate it every time. And so you can kind of save it where it is now. You can, as long as your cloth modifier is first, you can do this drop down and then apply as shape key, which will, it'll look like it got rid of it. But if you go down here into the object data properties under shape keys, you've got a new shape key here called cloth. And if we just turn that value up to one, you'll see that um, now we have sort of our cloth saved. If you were to go back and try to play this though, it's not going to work. The physics have been fully removed from this, but we sort of have this as a, it's kind of like a save state. So now we don't have to worry about baking it again. We know we've got the simulation just how we like it right there. So that's good. You can add in another level of subdivision if you want to make that look a little bit smoother. But yeah, that's looking pretty good. Easy way to create yourself just sort of a, a way to test out fabric materials or, you know, this could be a nice backdrop for a product or something like that. So that's great.